Pope John Paul II was undoubtedly one of the world historical individuals of the late 20th century. How did he contribute to shaping Europe, to the fall of communism, and the religious and moral landscape of our world? We see John Paul II as inextricably linked to the fall of communism in Eastern Europe. But what was his role and his context? Join me and Darash for how we got here. It is in this house, located in the small southern Polish town of Wadowice, that a Highlander boy by the name of Karol was born, clueless that fate or the hand of God would lead him to become the sovereign in the Holy See. Moments after she gave birth to him, his mother asked a midwife to open the window, which she did. And so the first thing that Karol Wojtyła heard was the litany of Loreto, sung by the citizens of Wadowice. As a priest, Karol Wojtyła would build a powerful rapport with young people while backpacking in the Polish mountains. But it will be only on October 16, 1978, that he conquered the highest possible peak for a Catholic, the papal throne. He has been the only pope who hailed from a communist country. He experienced both totalitarianisms, namely the horrid German totalitarianism and the Soviet one. He knew perfectly well what this kind of evil was made of. And he used his position to fight oppressive communist regimes, no matter the geographical latitude. Jan Paweł II zaprawiony. Honed by his experience of communism in Poland, John Paul II possibly prevented the ultimate communization of Latin America. His pontificate changed the fate of the world. Rozwój. Yet his most important battle against the Red Giant took place in his homeland. During his first pilgrimage to Poland in June 1979, the Pope proved himself the driving force of a great shift to come. Let your spirit descend and renew the face of this earth. This land. The renewal would take the form of the Solidarność trade union, a disgrace for the communist government of Poland before their Moscow overlords, and a light of hope for the long persecuted nation. There is no freedom without solidarity. The Pope's outreach earned him enemies. In May 1981, Mehmet Ariakcha attempted to assassinate the pontiff in Vatican, the heart of the Catholic Church. Some leads indicated Soviet or otherwise Marxist involvement. The Pope survived the attack and continued his mission. He lived to see the downfall of the Berlin Wall and Poland joining two powerful international alliances, NATO and the European Union. The Pope passed away on April 2, 2005, in the Vatican, leaving a legacy of interfaith dialogue and an impressive tally of 104 pilgrimages to 130 countries. Karol Wojtyła, history's only Polish Pope, traversed 1.3 million kilometers, giving hope to millions worldwide. Our guest today is Paweł Ukielski, a political scientist and the deputy director of the Warsaw Rising Museum. Welcome once more to the programme. Good evening. Uh, John Paul II is our topic today, and we joked earlier that uh, you mentioned this um, very uh, well-known uh, saying of Joseph Stalin when, when he was talking about a pope, how many divisions has the pope got? Um, talking about the, 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 the military or the, the physical power of the Pope at the time, 1940s. Uh, it turned out that John Paul II had one division, but a very big one. Yes. Uh, it was uh, enough to uh, destroy communism, to dismantle the Soviet Union. So it was a very strong division, I would say. Um, we, we can move on to the um, dismantling of the Soviet Union and communism as a general uh, point in a minute. What, let's go back to his election, election of a Polish pope, a Polish pope, a, uh, an Eastern European pope, on the to, uh, against the background of, of rather um, mysterious death or an illness of the first pope, that was John Paul the um, First. How would you? What was the reaction there to to that election? Well, of course, in Poland. It was uh, great joy. Uh, people were very happy. 
well, it was rather sad times in in Polish, in Poland, in Polish society. Uh, this first part of uh, Gerek's rule, when uh, <coughs> the life uh, was easier, there was uh, plenty of uh, of uh, goods in in shops, were already gone. Uh, the crisis was coming, and it was very strong sign uh, for Polish society, and of course for uh, the uh, communist rulers. It was uh, they treated uh, this election as a danger, and even more as a danger, it was treated by the comrades in Kremlin. Uh, this is an assassination attempt that was linked to, to the Kremlin as well later on. So um, it, was, it was obviously a physical danger, a moral danger. But the, when the Pope John Paul was elected, did, was, it is, it, was it his mission to contribute to the fall of communism? Or was it a more of a pastoral, a religious, a moral crusade? I think he combined those two, uh, two missions. Uh, of course, nobody knew uh, whether the communism uh, would fall. Yes, it seemed to especially, last forever. Yes, especially in such a short, relatively short time. Uh, he found very strong ally. Uh, the, uh, Ronald Reagan was elected uh, American president and he was the first president who wanted to, not just to survive, but he wanted to, uh, to win the Cold War. Uh, he was the first president who declared that goal. And of course, uh, Pope John Paul II did not officially de declare such goals. Uh, he focused on moral side of uh, communism he was criticizing communism for, uh, for its values. And uh, of course, he was a great supporter of Polish society, not only Solidarity Movement, which emerged after his first visit uh, to Poland, but also but the whole society. He went on a very famous pilgrimage in 1979, his first visit to Poland. Can you basically, basically describe the impact of that particular pilgrimage on the country? It was pilgrimage of great hope for, for the society, uh, which was already uh, very tired uh, about life, living conditions, uh, about, uh, about the lie uh, in which they had to live, uh, under the communist system, and suddenly, great moral leader, religious leader comes, leader who is a Pole, and leader who says, do not fear. And yes, people saw that um, their anti communist uh, feelings are shared by millions. That those feelings are not only in their family, among friends, but there are millions of people. And it led to establish, uh, establishment of solidarity movement just a year later, a uh, solidarity movement which gathered almost 10 million people in 35 million nations. So uh, enormous social movement. The moral impact was uh, great, especially during his uh, uh, later pilgrimages to, to Poland and during the, during the period of martial law. What was the impact of John Paul II on the rest of the world? Um, we've seen uh, some of his criticism of, for example, this liberation theology in South America, which championed Catholic priest championing um, revolt against established authority in South America, Central America. What was his uh, um, impact of his? Uh, what was the impact of his election in other parts of the world?
apart from, or is it just more or less a, a central European, was he a central European pope above all? I would... I wouldn't say he was, uh, uh, his impact was limited to Central Europe. I would say that his impact uh, uh, was not limited even to, uh, the, uh, to, to Catholic world, because he was the first pope that traveled that much. He visited more than 100 countries. Uh, and he was crossing not only borders of countries, but also religious borders. So, he was very engaged in, uh, in the dialogue with other religions, with the uh, Orthodox Church, uh, with, with Protestants, but also with, with uh, Muslims, so with Jews. So uh, his impact was not only, of course, he had great political impact, but uh, this religious one was uh, also very strong and his impact on crossing this, those borders on the uh, religious dialogue with other religions. And it was, it was really, really very important in uh, the world of Cold War. Uh, and I wouldn't underestimate this part of his, uh, of his uh, ruling um, as a pope. We can see as historians, the, every historian has a 2020 vision and we can tra uh, trace John Paul II's impact on the fall of communism a few years later in the, in the early 1990s. Um, was it as simple as that? Did John Paul II was he in for the long for the long moral crusade against communism or did he did he come at the correct economic and political time of course he uh, he 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 personally would not dismantle the whole communism as a one person yeah. of course he gave moral strength to to poles to central european nations uh, because it was not only impact on poles he had great impact on czechs for example who uh, strongly demanded uh, communist authorities to allow pope john paul ii to visit czechoslovakia so this this is uh, one point but of course uh, many factors were needed uh, to to uh, to fall uh, of communism, of course, of course, economic reasons were very important, but um, personalities also matter in politics. We had several personalities, strong personalities that gathered together in the same time. We mentioned, of course, John. Pope John Paul II, we mentioned Ronald Reagan, we have to mention Margaret Thatcher, and we have to mention uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, who didn't want to uh, dismantle communism, definitely he did, but he wanted to reform it. Yes. Why? Because he was aware that without reforms, it would collapse. Unfortunately for him, uh, his uh, reforms only accelerated the process. Um, it's, it's an amazing uh, collection of personality, politics, economics. The, all everything seemed to fall into place during that time, and the communism f collapsed like a pack of cards, effectively. Maybe it is also uh, that uh, the situation also created those personalities. This is uh, both way. Uh, that personalities create uh, uh, create political events, but also political events create personalities. Yes, the time and time and place. Uh, a final question to you, Professor. What's the? Is there any lasting legacy of John Paul II? We we speak of the generation John Paul II. Uh, recently, there's been a. Uh, thing we had in the, uh, an article we had in TVP World Portal about a football club that was named after John Paul II somewhere in Peru. So his, his influence is, is far and wide. But what is his, 
impact uh, legacy as a statesman. All popes have to be politicians to some to a larger or lesser degree. What is the impact of John Paul II as uh, a, a world a world historic figure? Well, definitely, uh, the fall of communism is uh, one of uh, his or his most important legacy as politician. He definitely uh, added his brick to this process, very, very big brick. Uh, what I said also, this, uh, this dialogue with, uh, uh, with, among the different religions well, is also a part of this legacy. Um, of course, in Poland, we have this generation, John Paul II generation, I am afraid that uh, his legacy is strong among those who remember him. I'm afraid that it is, uh, he is much less well remembered among people who, uh, who were born after his death or, or shortly before his, de his death. So those who do not remember him as charismatic leader, uh, both religious and Polit political. Is, is his legacy on the Catholic Church as marked as, as the world, do you think? Yes, I think uh, his legacy is, uh, is very strong. It was to some extent uh, later on uh, um, uh, uh, followed by uh, Pope uh, um, Benedict XVI. Uh, I would say that now this uh, this uh, current pope um, is uh, is a little bit different than than pope pope, uh, pope uh, John Paul II. He is uh, raised in different uh, circumstances and uh, definitely uh, uh, approach of Pope John Paul II towards the war in Ukraine would be different. Yes. Time, place and the individual. Uh, Pavel Wukielski, thank you very much for coming onto the programme. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching TVP World and do join us next time for How We Got Here.